Good morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome this morning. It's so lovely to see all your sparkling eyes smiling at me. What a lovely sight to behold. We meet in the name of God. We share the fellowship together, but all at a distance, a loving distance which respects our safety and care for one another. We're going to begin our service this morning with some music from Sebastian. Let us begin with our opening responses. Thanks be to you, O God, that we have risen this day to the rising of life itself. Be the purpose of God between us and each purpose, the hand of God between us and each hand, the pain of Christ between us and each pain, the love of Christ between us, and each love. O God, who brought us to this bright light of this new day, bring us to the guiding light of eternity. I'm now going to have a moment's silence for our confession, just to bring before God all that we've fallen short with this week. O God of life, eternity cannot hold you. 
nor can our little words catch the magnificence of your kindness. Yet in the space of our small hearts and in silence, you come close and repair us. O God of life, grant us your forgiveness for our careless thoughts, for our empty deeds, for our empty speech, and the words which we have wounded. O loving Christ, hanged on a tree, yet risen in the morning, scatter the sin from our souls as the mist from the hills. Begin what we do, inform what we say, redeem who we are. In you we place our hope, our great hope, our living hope, this day and forevermore. Amen. And our collect for today. God of glory, the end of our searching. Help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and give to all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price through your Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We now come to our reading for today. So we begin with our response. Listen for the word which God has spoken. Speak, Speak Lord, Lord, to our speaking. Speak, Speak Lord, Lord, to our listening. Speak, Speak Lord, Lord, to our souls. Deep understanding. We now have our gospel reading from Matthew 16, beginning at verse 13. Now when the disciples came into the district of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he said sternly, then he sternly ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the end of our gospel. Well, I've got a little story to share with you this morning before we launch into our Bible reading. It's about a mummy's attempt to join in in a Wii game, a console game that you play through the TV. And you can play it with your children and there's much fun to be had. But when mummy played this game with her children, she always lost. But her children enjoyed her company. And one day, mummy actually won the game. That night, as the children were getting ready for bed, and they were giggling, and mummy was tidying up the clothes, she overheard her children say, 
wasn't it nice that we let mummy win today? <laughs> that mummy was me. But I hadn't won the game in my own strength or my own skill set. It was a gift from their hearts to mine. And I think our Bible reading talks about centering our hearts and what comes from our hearts today. So this question, but who do you say I am? I wonder sometimes if we hear this question as Jesus' mini gospel exam. We're about halfway through Matthew's gospel. So it makes sense that Jesus might gather his disciples together and have a little plenary session to see what they've learned so far. If you really understand, who am I? We know the right answer. We've read Peter's answer. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Then he prays, is praised for his insight. But Jesus makes it clear that it comes from divine inspiration, not his own intellect. God is at work in his heart. So today's gospel reading is not, however, about giving the right answer. This is not a test. This is not about what is in our heads, but about what is in our hearts. It's about what lies at the core of our existence. Jesus is asking his disciples to consider what centers their lives. What is the axis about which their world turns? It's not just enough to give the right answer. They are to become and reveal the answer by their lives, their words and their actions. Those things for Jesus are foundational to a life of discipleship. We all have some center from which we live. People, things, experience tend to become our anchor point, the centre of our life. They give us our bearings and our stability. Our centre orients our life and the direction we go. It not only shapes how we live, but more importantly, who are we becoming? Our families, friends and other relationships can easily become the center of our world. Sometimes it's our beliefs, opinions, or prejudice. Anger or fear can live at the center of our life. For others, love and beauty may be the defining axis of life. Who or what is our center? Whatever it is, that center is capable of propelling enlivening and growing us or it can get us stuck in a rut where we stagnate. We often discover what lives at the center of our world when experiences and circumstances of life knock us off kilter, when things go wrong. Everything is thrown out of whack and we struggle to regain our center. Sometimes that means we've settled for something other than Christ on which to center our lives. Christ is the true center. That does not mean that there will be no difficulties, pain or losses. It's not like a magic wand. It means that when they occur, and they do, the center holds us. And we all need a center that will hold in Jewish teaching on the scriptures, it is said that Israel is the center of the world. At the center of Israel is Jerusalem. And at the center of Jerusalem is the temple. And at the center of the temple is the holy place. And at the center of the holy place is the ark, the presence and glory of God. But underneath the ark, is the foundation, the rock upon which it rests. I love that imagery. 
The imagery of that Jewish teaching takes us deeper and deeper to the center of the center of the center. That is exactly what Jesus is doing with the question in the gospel today. Who do people say that the son of man is? That very first question. Jesus is, is asking, what are the disciples hearing and seeing around them? What do we see and hear around us today about Jesus? But then the second question, but who do you say I am? He wants to know what they see and hear and are experiencing within themselves. Jesus is always pushing us to go deeper, to look within and discover who or what our life is centered on, and then to recenter. But we're followers of Christ. Isn't he already our center? Maybe so. But the life of discipleship is one of, is of one of continual recentering. You are the Messiah, the Son of God, the Living One. Simon Peter says, "This is more than just an answer. Those words has recentered him, has recentered his whole life. Christ is the axis around Peter, and he will be." a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And Jesus responds to his answer, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Jesus renamed Simon. His Greek name is Petros, which means rock. Simon is now rock not rock-like, but rock. Whenever we recenter our lives on Christ, we become a new person. Every time the lines of our lives converge on Christ, we become rock. We become the foundation, the rock on which rests the church, the new ark that holds and reveals the presence and the glory of God for all to see. With all its frailty, Jesus chooses human life and relationships to be the rock on which he builds the church. We are not, however, rocks that are immovable or unchangeable. As water slowly forms and shapes a rock over time, so does a lifetime of recentering form and shape us to be Christ's foundation in this world. Recentering our life is a life's work, and it's not easy work. It's challenging. It means we must continually let go of what we thought centered our lives and move to our true center, the Messiah, the son of the living God, the living one. The opportunity for recentering is hidden within the ups and downs of our lives. All our experiences mold us. And if we do it with Christ, we become something beautiful for him. But it's something that we do over time and we don't always get it right. Peter is the perfect example of that. He's the one of little faith, sinking in the water, but he got out of the boat. He was the one who didn't understand the parables, but yet he asked questions. He falls asleep and denies Jesus, yet he was there. Through it all, Peter was being shaped, formed, and molded into the rock Jesus knew him to be. Jesus' words, you are rock, and on this rock I will build my church. These are words for life. They were for Peter, 
and they are for us today. Who do you say I am? Don't just jump, don't just answer this question. Go live the answer. Discover rockness that Jesus knows each one of us to be. Live with hope in the midst of all our despair. Love your neighbour as yourself. Care for the poor. Feed the hungry. Defend the oppressed. Looking after creation. Offer forgiveness despite your anger. And pray when we're all too busy to pray. Love your enemies despite your fear. We need to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him new each day. So recenter, be the rock on which Jesus church stands before the world. Our lives, our words, our actions should bear a beautiful witness to the world, which reveals a beautiful gift from what is at the center of our heart towards but we don't do this in our own strength we have been given a lovely gift from God's loving heart the Holy Spirit to guide us to strengthen us each day so let us shine for Christ and be that witness in the world so that all may be able to come to him we're now going to have a piece of music played by Sebastian. Sebastian. Would you please stand if you are able to affirm our faith together. With the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the spirit with people everywhere we are 
planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracles and wonders of God, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. Please be seated for our intercessions. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this world and everything in it, for the precious gift of life which you bestow, bestow on each one of us, for the life which you share with us in Christ Jesus, your Son, and for all that he shows us about living life to the full. And now we seek your guidance from the Holy Spirit to assure us of your presence and to prompt us in our prayers as we pray for your world, for your church, and for your people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your world, for leaders of nations and governments called upon to make difficult decisions which affects people's health and livelihoods, asking that they may be informed by your wisdom and your compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of all creation. Help us to live in harmony and to care for every aspect of this precious world which you have made and loved. We pray for world leaders to find new and just radical agreements that will protect our fragile world for future generations. Inspire us to work together as your people, to change priorities in the way we live, so that we build a fair and safe world for all your creation a world where you, your will is done as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our communities, for the places in which we live, and for the people whom we love, recognising our interdependence on each other and our shared vulnerability in this time of crisis. We pray for all children who will be getting ready to return to school. Lord, we pray for your blessing on each school, for each teacher and for each child, that they would learn and be protected in this vulnerable time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your church, seeking to proclaim your message of life and hope, yet struggling to find new ways of witnessing and worshipping together, asking that we may be reassured of your powerful presence and strengthened to live out the truth of your kingdom so that all may have Christ at the centre of their life. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all people everywhere, for those struggling with illness and isolation, for those fearful about jobs and livelihood, and for all those who face an uncertain future. Bring your healing touch to all those grieving the loss of a loved one at this time. Bring comfort and peace in their sadness. Bind up the wounds of those hurt by unkind, disturbing, discriminatory or hateful words. Bring peace and a loving reassurance into their emotional pain. 
and in a moment's silence, we lift all those known to us who are ill or struggling at this time. Lord, in your mercy, may we and all for whom we have prayed be strengthened by your spirit, renewed by your grace, and restored by the presence of your Son, in whose name we always pray. Amen. Amen. And let us conclude our prayers for today with the prayer that our Saviour has taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And we now come to our notices. Our notices today, um, at the back of church, there is a sign-up sheet for your details to go on. We're trying to make a parish directory. We realise we haven't got one, and so we weren't able to phone everyone as um, the pandemic took hold. So we're trying to rectify that now and have a list of everybody's contact details. You have the choice to give your email, phone number or address. That's up to you which information you give. And then that will be held only by the ministry team and it will be used to contact people when we can't be together. Uh, I've got a notice for Broughton Astley. St Mary's is taking part in a walking market. So I think that stall set out around the village, which you walk to each one. So St Mary's Church is getting involved and we're going to have a preserve stall outside church. So if you've got any preserves, any jam or anything pickled, then could you drop it off at the rectory? We have the Ride and Stride that's happening, as usual, on the 12th of September. But we won't be opening our churches. The things will be happening in the porches, so paperwork will be there and bottles of water for the riders and the striders. And for Stony Stanton, there is the Scarecrow Festival, which will be happening at the end of September. And I have offered to coordinate that. Um, we're going to be doing it outside the church this year. Um, so if you want to get involved in that, then contact me. And the only other notice is that we'll be back at the same time next week. And next week, our theme will be Creation Sunday. So I'd like to thank Sebastian for playing today. Uh, for Steve, Be the Beadle family, for all their support. And Steve Walker, who puts it on YouTube, edits and puts it on um, YouTube. So without that going on, you know, we'd be stuck. So we're reaching out beyond the bounds of our building by technology. And now we come to our blessing. May God bless us. May God keep us in the Spirit's care and lead our lives with love. May Christ's warm welcome shine from our hearts and Christ's own peace prevail through this day and every day till greater life shall come. Amen. We're now going to have our final piece of music before we end our worship today.
that you all have a good week and meet you next week and if we can gather outside to chat and keep our social distancing that would be lovely thank you